A slew of Tea Party candidates won seats in Congress. Some wondered if they would be co-opted, so to speak, by the Washington establishment. Well, this week, Senator Rand Paul said it's the other way around. Listen. I went to my first State of the Union the other day, and guess who now is against earmarks? <laughs> <laughs> the President of the United States has been co-opted by the Tea Party. But some new conservative lawmakers are choosing not to join the new Tea Party caucus. And if the president and other Democrats move more to the center ahead of the 2012 elections, will the Tea Party lose its relevance? Joining us now is Newt Gingrich spokesman Rick Tyler, the founding director of Renewing American Leadership, and Democratic strategist Richard Sacaridis, former, former special assistant to President Clinton. Great to see you both today. Appreciate Good it. Good to be here. So as you, as you saw there, not surprisingly, I, I should say, um, this Tea Party caucus got a little feisty. You saw what Rand Paul said there, getting up there and saying, is the Tea Party still a force? He, that was his first question. He got a lot of cheers and everybody clapping and saying, of course it is. Going on to talk about, though, how some have wondered, would it be co-opted? Then he does the about face and says President Obama himself has been co-opted by the Tea Party. Richard, who's co-opting whom here? Well, I think, you know, the truth is, is that there's a lot that the Tea Party and the Democrats agree on. I mean, the Democrats and the Tea Party agree that fiscal discipline is important. And it's really the leaders of the Republican Party, especially the Republican congressional leadership, that have insisted time in and time again to, uh, to raise these deficits. I mean, President Clinton, the president I worked for, uh, balanced the budget and lowered the deficit. And then we had eight years of tax cuts for the rich. So I think that there's a lot that the Democrats and, and, and the Tea Party movement can agree on. I certainly don't think they'll become irrelevant because I think that they will help the Democrats impose the fiscal discipline we need. Rick, what do you say to that? Well, I agree that uh, President Clinton and uh, Speaker Newt Gingrich did uh, demonstrate some fiscal discipline. We got four years of balanced budgets, and we got $410 billion of the debt paid off. Uh, but I disagree somewhat. Well, there's a couple things going on here. One is in the President's State of the Union address, he said we were having a Sputnik moment. Uh, but what he failed to mention is that his policies actually caused this moment, and he is the Sputnik that the Tea Party is now trying to solve. So I think the Tea Party is absolutely going to be relevant in 2010. Look, there's two visions of winning the future here. One is Obama's winning the future of keeping power and money in Washington for the ruling class, and the Tea Party's vision is to move money and power out of Washington for the working class. And I think that's the fight we're going to have. We should have solved it a long time ago. But look, stimulus, which is now called investment, still equals spending. And every time government spends, it keeps money out of the private sector, and that's where jobs are created. Yeah, Richard, I, ha I had to jump in there on that because I was actually going to say that's the Republican argument that this whole, this whole idea of investments, it really is just spending, according to the Republicans and others. Well, I love how, I love how the Republicans now are trying to give Newt Gingrich credit for President Clinton's balancing the budget. But we'll, you know, that I'm sure there's a lot of credit to go. That's because I'm Clinton sure, vetoed it twice. I'm sure there's a lot of credit <laughs> to go around for that, for that leadership then. But listen, I think President Obama's numbers uh, are improving. I think he's found his footing. That's true. I think the reason why that's happening is, is because he's, um, you know, he's found his footing. He's uh, being more optimistic. Uh, I think the economy is improving. We're starting to see signs of that. And I think that he's figuring out it's not a left or right thing that he's involved in now. I think he's figured out how to, how to work and put the American people back to work. So I think, you know, he's extremely well positioned going into year three. And I think we're going to see real progress for the country and for American working families going forward. And, you know, I think this will be a good moment uh, to try to work with the Tea Party, the Democrats, whenever we can so around issues like fiscal discipline. You mentioned, you mentioned the approval rating. Um, I think it was Jim DeMint of South Carolina who was also speaking at this event, um, talking about how the polls are showing, uh, you know, a stronger approval ratings for President Obama. And that was sort of the rallying cry for the caucus there, um, to, for, the, for the Tea Parties to become even more passionate as the weeks and months and years go on. So They're Rick, excited I'm ask about you, it, too? What was that? They're excited about it, too. Well, I don't know. Is Obama the lightning rod still, Richard? Well, listen, President Obama, I think, is going to be a unifying force and a unifying figure in these next couple of years going forward. For whom? For all Americans, bringing all Americans together, putting all Americans back to work. Rick, I'm going to let well, you jump in on that one. Well, we hope so, but not for more government spending. Look, the Tea Party is going to have a bigger role than ever if, if uh, Barack Obama's vision for the future is to bring more money into Washington to spend more. Essentially, he's offered nothing new. His answer is more Obama. And I do agree that his poll ratings have improved. That started with the, uh, I don't think the lame... Can, I don't really think you can say he's offered nothing new because I think you see, saw some of the cooperation that he had with Congress the, at the, the end the of the, the lame duck session. Was, was, 
the was ability to come earmarks, together. Which the Republicans offered never to send well, them. Well, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the earmarks debate is a very interesting one, and the president is against earmarks, as is a lot of the, as are a lot of the and Tea that's Party a good members. Thing. That's something we can and all it agree is a really on. good thing, but it's the Republican congressional leadership that wants to continue to make these earmarks. Let me, speaking of Republican well, that's uh, not leadership, true. They're the ones who offered to get rid of them. Rick, very quickly, Marco well, Rubio. Well, then we have pretty complete agreement that Gentlemen, we should be able to get rid boys. of them. Yeah. Uh, Marco Rubio of Florida, this is a shining star coming out of the Republican right. Party. Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, both freshman lawmakers. They were invited to join this caucus. They did not. Rubio has right. suggested, you know, look, we're conservative. We, uh, we don't need a formal Tea Party caucus anymore. I, is that the case? Is he right, Richard? Uh, I think that the Tea Party will continue to be an important organizing principle for those who believe in it and, and perhaps for the Republican Party. So I don't think you're going to th see it disappear. Right. But I think, I think, you know, the Tea Party can have a very important influence if they will help the Democrats balance the budget and move forward with smart budget choices and putting Americans back to work, then we're all for it. Rick, I'll give you the final Good. word on this one. All right, look, Rubio, I think, is right. I don't think there's actually a, a role for a, a grassroots organization in the U.S. Senate. It's a grassroots organization, the Tea Party, that got these senators up there, and if they don't behave, they should kick them out. So there's the grassroots organization, the Tea Party, is best left to the grassroots and not be uh, worked here from Washington. I love it. The Democrat is arguing for the retention of the Tea Party. The Republicans against the last it. Word, Richard, bad boy. All right, <laughs> gentlemen. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate Good to be it. With you. Good to see you.